Dominic Bain. I'm a director of IT at a small airline located in the Bahamas. Our airline is named Bahamas Air. Uh, we're a government-owned airline. We only have about uh, nine aircraft. Uh, five of them are ATR props, and we have four uh, 737 uh, Boeing jets. Uh, being government-owned, the reality is we were not or are not as efficient as we like to be. We have about 600 staff, and 80 of them are pilots to fly the, the nine airplanes. Um, previously, uh, last year the, and the early part of this year, we used a Sabre um, PSA system to uh, process our passengers and um, manage our flights. In March of 2020, we migrated to the crane platform uh, managed by Hit It. And uh, this presentation is just to tell you a little bit of our story, moving from a legacy uh, system such as Sabre to a new distribution capable system such as the crane platform by Hit It. So what I'll start doing is just talking about um, what our airline did and how it worked um, before we migrated to the Hit It platform. So we can start talking about our schedule. Every airline has schedules to maintain and adjust as the year goes by. But um, in coming to Bahamas Air in March of 2019, um, as ID professional of 20 years, uh, these are the tasks that came, um, came to me to manage. So our schedule was set up in a manner that we had one guy, he was a guru, had lots of years of experience, and he'd use a different platform, I think it was Oasis, and he designed the schedule. It was lots of lines of code, green screen. It was quite amazing what he did. But when he finished the schedule, he then had to compress it in the file and then send it out to the guys in our operations control center to manage the flights. He then sent a separate email to the ladies who work in our uh, crew management, crew scheduling department so that they can slot and roster and do the pairing so that our flights could carry out. He then sent a third email to our commercial team so that they can assign um, you know, the correct flights or prices or rules um, um, for our customers to purchase either via um, our website, our ticket offices, our airport offices, or through the GDS, either or. So it was a, a cumbersome process whereby if we had to make a change in a flight for whatever reason, we then had to reach out, manage through four departments, what was going on. And the fifth department suffered, which was our customer service counters. So from time to time, we had folks that came to the airport um, for a flight that no longer existed. And we could say that it could have been some more time and consideration from the our team members that were involved, but it was just a cumbersome and complicated system. So where this, these shuffles came in, into play was with our communication with our passengers. Obviously, if you're a passenger and you show up to the airport six in the morning for a flight, but it isn't until 2 p.m., you may be a bit upset. And, you know, we did have a system in place to communicate with passengers to notify them of changes. Unfortunately, the system was, it's just a queue system so that if you make a change in your flight, um, you know, in a queue, we know that the flight is tomorrow is going to the beautiful island of Acklands in the Bahamas, and we want to call you to change the time. So a few ladies in the room would get a queue system. Okay, let me call this passenger, uh, Sheila, and tell her if I has changed. And then after that, she'll get another one. The reality is in our queue at a given time, we had like 11,000 passengers at a time uh, for these five ladies to call. So it wasn't very effective. Um, we weren't able to actually pick a flight to say, you know, flight 303 to Auckland uh, tomorrow morning at six o'clock and pull these passengers by themselves and then email them or text them and talk to them. We had to do it through the queue system. So it was very, very difficult to talk with our passengers. Um, and if you can't talk with the passengers, then obviously you, you, you can't sell them more stuff. So I remember when I first came, it was in, in March and we had a, a charter flight, well, it's sort of a charter flight, an ad hoc flight to Trent Africa Carnival. And the marketing lady came to me, hey, new IT guy, we need um, to find the passengers that are on this one flight going to Trinidad so that we can sell them, um, you know, meals, if they want chicken or beef or fish uh, for the meal on the flight to Trinidad. 
And I was like, oh, sure, I'll, I'll go right, get right on it. So I talked to my guys, my team, and they were like, yeah, that's that's impossible. Like, it can't be impossible. Call call the vendor and, and ask them how to do it, and we'll just run a query and get that out there. And they came back and said, it's impossible. We have to um, sign up for this program, and um, we'll take a year to develop it, and then we pay a huge bag of money, and then you'd be able to find out the names and numbers and email addresses of the passengers that are on a particular flight. So this obviously was untenable. Unfortunately, for them to get their tickets from us, the only way to get it would have been if they come directly to our ticket office, which we had two in Nassau and one in uh, the second city in Grand Bahama, or come to the airport and buy a ticket. Or the more popular way would be to go to a travel agency, which everyone is closest to them, or what is their, their preferred travel agency and buy a ticket. But what that meant going to a travel agency is that these persons had to go through the GDS and then purchase the tickets, which obviously had, had you know costs that we couldn't avoid. So each ticket round trip, we gave up an extra $20 to $10 um, because they were going through the GDS. It, it didn't make any sense. Now, I wasn't some great genius that figured this out. People before I came in March of last year realized there was a problem and they had to knock down these issues. So as a result of that, um, they decided to actually, I guess, bring me on to lead this project that they were predestined to um, carry out. So when I got there, um, they sat me down, hey, we're looking at moving our system over. Our contract expires in um, March of 2020, and you know it, it's now March of 2019. We're gonna need you to um, quarterback this thing. So, I mean, I took the challenge up. So they had, obviously, the, the incumbent vendor, Saber, wanting to re-engage the contract, and they were coming to us with a few proposals. We had, a, I think it was maybe CETA and the HIDA team that were already um, talking to us about um, moving to a, a new platform. So I wasn't satisfied that we just picked from pretty much two because it seemed like it was a problem with the first one. So we ended up having about six vendors um, come back at us um, to just you know find out what we wanted, what we needed, uh, where we were at, um, just for a few little uh, phone calls and information gathering. And then they came back to us and they gave us a few proposals um, saying, well, this is what it'll cost, this is what it'll take. Um, but there was a few things that we needed to get nailed down to know that someone could do. First of all, we needed to find a vendor that could or who in the past migrated another airline from Sabre to them because this is a government-owned airline. So there's no opportunity for failure, you know. So if a small company fails, you know, it happens every day. If a government fails, it's a pretty big deal. So we wanted to make sure we had it all, all buttoned up. Uh, one of them was obviously hit it. So after we shortlisted, we didn't stop there. We had to make sure that this was going to work. So we visited both vendors um, at the data centers to make sure that um, they had the right sort of setup. Um, I'm not an airline guy, I'm an IT guy. So we had to make sure that they had a robust uh, server infrastructure, that they had redundancy, that they had uh, consideration for disaster recovery, things of that nature. So I had hopping all over the place, I started going to Washington, DC, to Frankfurt, Germany, uh, to Istanbul, Turkey, and all about trying to find out what their data center was like and doing these site surveys. We also um, spoke with a number of the clients from these different airlines. Um, from these different um, vendors. So we spoke to maybe 10 different airlines to find out what were their, what their impression was uh, of um, these two um, software platforms that we had to choose from. And we even found an a, a airline that had experience with both. So that, that was useful. We particularly went to airlines that had Sabre and moved to this um, new platform, these new platforms as well. That was particularly important for us to see well, what their experience was. Did they miss anything? What were their struggles? Um, and that informed our decision uh, quite a lot. They chose HitIt 
uh, with a creating platform for the, the vendor of choice for our uh, core business um, application project and hit, it, hit the ground running. Um, it seemed like we signed it maybe like on a Thursday and then Monday they were here. It was amazing. So they started hitting us up with questionnaire for our, our um, department heads, our stakeholders, our subject matter experts to just answer questions, basic stuff like, you know, how many aircraft do you have? What what model, what series? Um, where all do you operate? What are your airports? What is your infrastructure at each airport? And we sent out to all the, the, you know, the executives and the senior managers. We prompted them, we reminded them, and they still didn't fill out the questionnaires. It was quite, quite daunting and upsetting. So what we did, is, you know, I, I escalated, I went and I got um, my managing director involved and got the chairman involved and said, hey, this is very important. This is, you know, this is a multi-million dollar project. We have to get this together. So we sat in the room and we made them fill the questionnaires and we marshaled them, we got the questions and they sent them in. And you know what? They were incomplete. So it didn't, it didn't work out as planned. So what the hit team did is they sent down um, like two or three of their guys for each um each particular department and they sat down and they had um interviews um scheduled with each person and they found and they found the time to complete their assessment and get everything they needed to do to customize the the application for us for bahamas air you know and they're offering to us from here that we got a full suite of products we didn't just get the pss and the which is the passenger support system and the departure control system. We also got, we requested the revenue accounting system. We requested um, operations control systems, our crew management, quite a few features. We even got them to try and revamp our website and their booking engines and stuff like that. But one of the features that we wanted them to do was our revenue accounting software. And like seemingly right after we signed the pen or decided to select them, the system crashed. And it was a nightmare because this system we were going to use to try and uh, migrate our data, it's it's in the revenue accounting um, system. So it was, a, it was a bit daunting for us. It had sent um, like three folks on a plane and we got to work. So the first issue we had to resolve was data recovery. Um, that was, you know, a little daunting. But the reality is with revenue accounting, um, the different GDS entities, they sent us a file and that file is processed uh, via whatever revenue guide system you have. So we fortunately had those files uh, so on a separate server. So they were able to take those files in the raw format and process it and work backwards and get us all our data, all our bookings and continue going forward and get our pre-bookings. So all of our um, information uh, that we've gone to the old system, we were still going and in a short period of time, they were able to stand up a revenue accounting platform for us and it happened very very quickly so we had to find a way to migrate without um our old vendor support and we relied on those same files here to recover uh, from the revenue accounting system along with uh, a few tricks of the trade in order to get um our system migrated from the old uh to the new without any support whatsoever to make sure that our schedule was the same or to make sure that um, each pnr each passenger name record was actually you know, accounted for and migrated over into the system. So if you bought a ticket um, in February and you were flying in April, us migrating in March wouldn't impact you know, your, your travel or give you any issues. Uh, but we worked on that. We, we did some long hours. We got some equipment. Uh, we did multi-site uh, transfers and we were confident that we were able to go through. So the migration lasted about four hours. Um, like for our PNRs, we had Something like 97% of them went over flawlessly, and the other one and a half percent, two and a half percent, we did them manually. So we the customers didn't really have any interruption in the sales or operation, and you couldn't notice. Um, there was a lot of talk about whether we'd be able to um, still have our pre-clearance into the U.S. and will that work or will this you know blow up on our bases on migration day? And what we did is like a week or two weeks before, we tested it. We migrated some PNRs early, um, earlier for a flight to the US and went through and the guys went to the custom agents and they were like, oh, this is new. Okay, cool. 
stamp, and they went right through. Because uh, the project management team, they reached out to the U.S. authorities. They did all the protocols and procedures, all the tests, and they passed all of them. So we had our pre-clearance. We had our overflight. Everything we needed, we had done. And there was no issue whatsoever. So they really did a, a good job, and they, they ought to be commended. Um, you know, a lot of hard palpitations and confusion in the mix. But, I mean, they did exactly what they said they were going to do. And... They didn't miss a deadline. It, it was as if, I guess, they did it before. But it was the first time for us. It was a very daunting experience. And I'll round off by um, saying uh, that uh, post-migration, it came down to the same things that was pre-migration. Our schedule. The schedule was now dynamic. Uh, one person altered the schedule. And it ripple effect through all the different operation control, uh, the, obviously the scheduling department, the, cus the, the customer service team at the airports. The pricing folks, everyone was aware of changes as we go along. So we don't have people showing up at the airport. The flights don't exist anymore. Further, we have multifaceted communication with our passengers. Not only does it show you the flight change on the screen of the airport, you also can see it in your application. Uh, uh, on your app on your phone or an email that comes from, from, from our system or text message. So passengers now are communicated with, not just through a queue system, but through four or five different ways. And more importantly, our local travel agents can now sell directly from our portal. So we don't have to go through the GDS in order for to sell tickets, you know, 10 miles away. They're all connected to us directly. So it saves us a lot of money. So um, that's most of what I want to talk about. I know I did go over the time a lot uh, for the conversation. But um, if you want to talk about it a little bit more, then um, you can ask me questions after the session's over. Thank you.